Alex Jones recently shouted you out. Did did he call you and say, "Listen to me. No. The globalists are coming. <laughs> globalists are coming for Good. you. We want you to get on a plane, come down to Austin, Texas, and join Infowars. We'll Dude, give you a lifetime you supply of Infowars vitamin supplements and freeze dried emergency food. <laughs> How does a freeze dried meat bucket sound, huh?" Here we go. We made it. Episode three. We got a good one today. What's her face will be on the show later. If you're not familiar, she does these hilarious political commentary videos. Oh, my apologies. I was wearing my mask because I just got back from a full day of being a good person. Yeah, and I thought I was sarcastic. I got to give a shout out to my sponsor who gave me all these clothes. The artwork on this stuff is incredible. It basically encapsulates the modern-day dystopia we're living in. Check them out at ForbiddenClothes.com. They gave me a promo code you could use, JOEY10. That'll get you 10% off. I'm a little late to the game, but I saw this hilarious clip of these girls taking selfies during a baseball game, and the announcer just rips these girls apart. This guy is basically me if I was a baseball announcer. Listen to this. Every girl in the picture is locked into her phone. Oh, Lord. Every single one is dialed in. Welcome to parenting in 2015. <laughs> They're all just completely transfixed by the technology. David Peralta. <laughs> oh, hold on. I'd take a selfie with the hot dog. Selfie with the churro. Selfie just of a selfie. Peralta. Knocks it into center. David tonight, two for two, a leadoff single here in the fourth. And nobody noticed. Help us, please. Somebody help us. So after I posted this video, I got a message from the girl who took a photo with the hot dog. We actually have her on the line right now. Hi, Connell. Is that how you say your name, Connell? Yes, Connell. Okay. Yes, that's Thanks. it. Thanks for coming on the show. I, I appreciate it. Oh, my it. pleasure. And my pleasure. Now, I'm intrigued by this. You went yes. viral for taking selfies at a baseball game. This mm-hmm. this is a new type of fame that didn't exist before social media. It is a bit um, ridiculous. Yes. What kind of like the virality of <laughs> stupidity like this? <laughs> I mean, you guys were on the news talk shows, right? We were in like Jimmy Fallon's um, uh, like opening monologue for one of his, like one of the nights that it got really big. Um, ESPN picked it up. Yeah, it was all over the place. I mean, there's a painter out there who's probably as good as Leonardo da Vinci. That guy (laughs) probably can't even get 20 (laughs) followers on his Instagram, let alone a television interview. Poor guy. Meanwhile, you're flying all over the country doing talk shows. How do you feel about that? You find any of this absurd? I mean, it was absurd, and it, it. But the cool thing was, is that like the way that we were able to spin it for good uh-huh. made it a little less um, like silly and like kind of like frivolous. I think. Well, explain you know, that to people to, like, because people might not know that you, like you said, you were able to spin it into something positive. And didn't you get some kind of money from somebody and you donated to a cause? How did that go down? Yes. Yeah, so I think, so initially the announcers were kind of brutal and they were. Um, they were, they were not very nice talking about my mama like that. Um, but uh, so I think they felt better, like caught a little bit of heat for talking about us, like young girls like that. Gotcha. Um, so they ended up asking us back to the game the next night and donating a bunch of free tickets. Um, but all of us were kind of like, you know, screw you, not after that. And so we worked directly with a domestic violence shelter in Phoenix. Um, so we ended up donating all the tickets to the families um, that were living in the shelter. So they had a super fun, you know, kind of family baseball night out that they got to enjoy. And then we were invited um, to... LA to go on the Ellen show where she gave us like 10 grand to give back to a new leaf. Um, so that was awesome. Well, that's good that you spun it into something positive. Now I got to ask you, how many selfies are on your phone right now? Um, you know, I could probably check, you know, and like the albums and see how many let's probably thousands, thousands, not just, not just of me, but like with me and my friends, totally thousands. So like, 
because now just understand i'm just out of touch i'm just curious uh-huh. what I, I just when i don't understand something i ask questions so don't take this personal but like no, no. do people that because you you're obviously an expert in this field so, <laughs> <laughs> so uh-huh. when you post the selfie like people that post selfies every day mm-hmm. like do they do that because they think their friends forgot what they look like I mean, considering the um, eternal lockdown that we're in or kind of in, I w- maybe that could be it for like the past year. People are, you know, um, I know like at least recently in the last couple months, like I forget what I look like with makeup on. Like I got a little ready for this and I was like, oh, wow, I am actually cute. Like she could actually, <laughs> she still you got remind it, so. yourself that every day, don't you? <laughs> right, right. But um, no, no, not every day. Okay. Because I went through your Instagram. And, oh yeah, and, yeah. And I found a few <laughs> photos, and maybe you could help explain to me where you're going okay. for here. So, okay. you know, I I see. Hold on, let me actually grab my. Yeah, let's see here. which ones you see here. All right, so I I saw a few nice photos. I've had my you. Instagram for a nice long while, so I don't know how far back you went. <laughs> well, just scrolling, I saw a few nice photos with your mom. Okay. And yeah. Then, so here's one. It's of you. Mm-hmm. A, there's a. It's you. A selfie in the mirror, topless on the bed. With yes. an empty bag of popcorn next to you. And now, Oreos. So tell me, what, Oreos there what too. compelled you to take that photo and what compelled you to post it? Um. Uh, well, I was feeling myself clearly. Okay. Because the shape was looking nice. I feel like I take more pictures. You do it for the girls and the gays and the gays. Okay. So okay. when I take like cute kind of sexy photos, it's definitely not. Because I have like a crush on a boy that I want uh, okay. so to see it on his timeline. I just always wondered what the I want the girls to tell was. me how cute I am. Oh, oh, I want my friends to tell me, girl, you're looking fly. Okay. So For sure. Does your mother have conversations with you about these photos? Is she concerned or does she? Uh... <laughs> well, if there was a time to be concerned, it would have been in high school when mm. I got Oh my god! I'm totally just selling myself out here. Uh-oh. I uh, got kicked now, off the cheer team in high space. school. This is a very yes. safe space. Sure, this, this, sure. <laughs> did somebody warn no. you about me? That somebody must yeah, my, have warned you about. Somebody me. said to you, yeah, they were like, "Be careful! You should listen to what he does before you go on there and <laughs> well, subject yourself to that." I gotta, I gotta commend you for coming on because you're very brave and and you obviously oh, have you. a good sense of humor. So I, can I laugh really at myself, appreciate for sure. that. So you oh, need no, to know it was that. My pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. But um, I did. Um, if there was a time for my mom to be concerned about scandalous photos, it yeah. would probably been in high school. I got kicked off the cheer team because a couple of my girlfriends and I went um, streaking at the high school. Nobody was there. Wow. It was after hours. It was over like a winter break or something. And we were like, let's just go be we- stupid. And we did. And there was a statue of our mascot. And we're like behind the bushes, like in the right. nude and like all cheeky whatever and so admin got a hold of it <clears throat> and um she thought it was funny i didn't get any trouble for it and she's never made me feel like bad about my self-expression i guess right what well, was this <laughs> pre-social media this was like at the dawn of social media because so- i think back then like people weren't actually filming every little thing like the snapchats and the instagram stories where i feel people are more prone to just capture everything that's going on so anything ridiculous yeah. that they see in the moment they're everyone's quick to pull the phone out pull out the so phone you got right. lucky. i think back then yeah you got lucky <laughs> well, con- debating can you know debating how how you want to look at that lucky or not wow. getting kicked off the cheer team it was right. pretty devastating to a teenage girl but um well, I think it's a pretty funny story now. It, so, so w- let me ask you: What would it cost to get you to delete your Instagram forever? Like, if someone forever. offered you like five thousand dollars for the rest, you of know it, would what? You do it? I would take a pretty penny for it, but yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go too crazy because I think my heart lies um, with Twitter. Twitter's your deal, huh? Twitter is Twitter is the best place to be. It like the humor the sense of humor on the internet people just amaze me every day so you would probably have to pay me forever yeah forever instagram is like obviously it has its pros and its cons and it's oh god that would be a a bummer is there a number uh i'm not ellen so i can't really offer you the money so right yeah no probably like yeah upwards of 10 grand wow that's that's not not that much so it's not that i mean yeah to you then 
No, well, not like life or death. Well, what about this? I have a lot of fun with it. So what would be worse, deleting your uh, social media or disabling your camera on your phone forever? Oh, disabling the camera story. on my phone yeah, forever. Like yeah, that's can. totally different. Well, then yeah. let me ask you this. If there was a okay. guy hanging someone off a cliff by their uh-huh. feet that said to you, the <laughs> only way to save this man's life is uh-huh. you have to disable the camera on your phone forever. Would you do it to save the man's life? Yeah, you can't do that to me like that. Could I Could I take pictures on other um, in different with different sure, technology, just your like if I could have it, phone, like no a camera, camera phone. Fine, 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 done. Save his life, I guess. But yeah. then, what if it was no cameras at all? <sighs> you got to think about this one. That one would be so hard. Are you kidding? That would be so hard. That's like no memory ever, ever materialized ever again. That would suck. That would suck. Would you lick the but bottom life- of a homeless person's foot or and delete your <sighs> social media for a year? Oh, I would delete it for a year rather than lick a man's foot in okay, general. Good, good, good. Didn't even have to be homeless. So I'll just pass on the man altogether. Let me ask you this. Have you ever posted a photo of yourself and it uh-huh. didn't get as many likes as usual and less comments? And did you feel a certain way about that? I um, I noticed. Yeah. Definitely. Um, but it didn't. Uh, make me feel like too bad or some kind of way. Okay. I didn't, um, I like totally noticed it for sure. Like, oh, I'm getting like less likes on my post. But I think that happened as I got a little bit older well, that's, and curated. Right. Well, that's the, the thing, you're a little bit feed. older, but do you think that that affects some younger kids? Absolutely. I have, like, I might think it's a, for like I said, like when I was saying pros and cons earlier, right. I think it has like the power to do so much good, yeah. um, but ends up doing a lot of harm in the process. Yeah. Um, like young kids don't know that likes don't matter. Right. You know? That's a thing. They just don't matter. It's not. It's yeah. it, for what? It's not anything tangible. It doesn't mean anything. It's you know, it's that's not comforting that's what you at all. To me, is that it's like yeah. they're emotionally attached to something that actually doesn't matter. But I, I understand why, because when you're a kid, you don't you don't understand anything, right? Right. So it's kind of right. like I could see how that could happen, but like you and I, like we didn't grow up like that, you know, as a as a child. Well, they, like if you could sit somebody down, like one of your loved ones, maybe that's a little bit younger, that might be affected yeah. emotionally by this kind of stuff like what would you what would you say to them you know um it's i think i would tell them that it's everybody's highlight reel it's nobody's real life and it's really easy to play like the compare game really like right off the bat as soon as you just get on your you know home feed and start scrolling um but nobody is posting their 2 a.m you know breakdown eating ice cream over the sink right you know and, and those happen to everybody. So I think I would just explain that it's definitely just a highlight reel. I know it's mine, you right. know, Excellent. and I even try and be straight up about uncomfortable things on occasion on my own feed. So I guess that's what I would pass on. I appreciate you coming on Connell. And oh, it was my pleasure. And I, and yeah, I want you course. to know, I don't hate you. Okay. No, as no, brutal no. <laughs> as I could be, I think you're the a lovely people, person. Thank you. Thank you. The people in the comments, I mean, I, a couple of the girls w- went scrolling through the comments and I, I actually didn't even bother. Cause I was like, I know people are mean. My mom gave me right. a very good piece of advice as a kid. She was like, kids are mean, which I have you know, taken with me as people are mean in general. They'll be mean. They called us like they had, they said we had the combined IQ of like a burnt tater tot. That one was funny. Right. But others were worse and less, you know. Like, you got to figure some. too. Who cares what anybody thinks anyway, right? Yeah, exactly. I always Somebody's, look at who's trolling I, you on the internet. Is the only. Pfft. I always look at it this way: the, the the only people that matter in my life are my friends and my family's opinions, people that Amen. I love, right? Because otherwise, yep. the, a random person to me saying something on the internet is the equivalent of me driving on the freeway and like caring what some guy in the window in a high rise thinks. I mean, like, who gives a shit? They don't in know your rear me. view, right? Yeah, it doesn't. So, you know, shouldn't affect your day. I agree. Anyway, I appreciate well, thank you coming you for on to give your on. side of the story. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. No, I had a blast. This is awesome. Right. Thank you so much. <laughs> Have a good one. All right. I think we'll go into the mailbag before we get into our next guest. You never know what you're going to get with the mailbag. We got a 
voicemail looks like from a uh, Caroline. So, hey, Jojo. Just shouting out to you from Australia, letting you know what's up. Um, yeah, I'm still waiting for you to do more um, visual stuff because it's kind of hot. But, um, yeah, anyways. Um, oh, there was something else I was going to tell you. I'm watching this ex- massive documentary about... Oh, I can't, I can't really tell you what it is right now because my head's pounding. But, um, yeah, you have a yeah. good day, mate. And um, keep in touch, yeah? Bye. Yeah. Oh, and oi, if oh, you ever more. come down to Australia, let me know. And um, we'll definitely, I'll definitely take you out in the town so you can kick your heels up. <laughs> Yeah. Who even says that anymore? But whatever. All right. Later. Okay. Well, there was that. Whatever drink she made, I want that drink. Minus the uh, whatever she dropped in it. Um, All right. uh, Thanks, Caroline. All right. My next guest is a popular political humorist. With a fine-tuned radar for bullshit. Oh, my apologies. I was wearing my mask because I just got back from a full day of being a good person. I love my mask because it's a simple yet effective way to display my righteousness. Am I concerned that two children in China dropped dead because they were forced to wear masks in gym class? Nope. Am I concerned that we're creating a generation of children who will be socially awkward and conditioned to fear their fellow man? No. Am I concerned that I'm contributing to an impending socialist technocracy that will enslave the global population? Not even a little bit. Am I concerned that my mask is symbolic of my compliance to the social conditioning that will eventually lead to the forced vaccination of every man, woman, and child on planet Earth? Not a chance. And why am I not concerned, you ask? I'm not concerned because I decided a long time ago that shallow and significant gestures are a much easier way to showcase my morality than actually being moral. Because in order to be a real good person, I gotta stand up to a real bad person. And I don't like standing up to or for anything. I've decided that it's much easier to trick my own mind into thinking compliance is a virtue instead of what compliance actually is. Cowardice. I prefer to float through life completely ignorant to the fact that every socialist takeover has always begun in the exact same way. With government overreach, public shaming, censorship, and a toilet paper shortage. Don't believe me? Google toilet paper shortage in communist Russia. Did you think you were having a unique experience? I prefer to pretend history never repeats itself so that I can stand by and turn a blind eye every time history repeats itself. I prefer to call anyone who speaks up, fights back, or stands their ground a lunatic or a conspiracy theorist so that I don't feel obligated to do my own research. Research takes away from me time. And lastly, I prefer to put on my mask and stand among a sea of masks so that I never have to be seen, be free, or reveal the deep, dark shadows that lurk within me. Hello, Miss What's-Her-Face. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How you doing? Good. You know, you're the second Canadian in a row to come on my show. I'm realizing I really like Canadians. I didn't know you guys were so honest. I had Sean Avery on the last episode. Yep. And you two seem to be more American than half the people in this country. <laughs> I think uh, this year has kind of put Can- uh, Canadians on the map a little bit. People think it's bad here in America, but I heard you guys weren't allowed to buy Christmas lights. Is that true? <laughs> I actually don't know because I never do that. I heard, but I do know people. that they are they are like sectioning off non essential items in stores. That's crazy. Did you watch the inauguration? I watched a little bit of it, like just enough to watch Joe Biden waving at imaginary crowds. I saw waving that at a bush. Yeah, I saw Bernie's just sitting there by himself. Did you see that <laughs> clip of him and yeah, the, that was with good. his gloves or whatever? <laughs> That's like, like those guys screwed him over so bad. Why would you go to that? That's like getting your house robbed and then showing up to the burglar's wedding. You know what I mean? Like, why would you even be a part of that? I'd be like, screw you guys. Probably paid. 
probably, probably paid, paid to be there, make I, an appearance. I just have a hard time looking at Biden. I didn't watch. Ever since I saw those videos of him sniffing those kids on C-SPAN, he just creeps yeah. me out. I don't know. When it comes to children, and it's not like I'm sitting here acting like the Trump locker room talk audio <laughs> wasn't creepy, but seeing someone groping children on, on video. Well, I mean, if sniffing the children on camera is what he does, what's he doing off camera? Uh, I know. It's funny because people lost their shit over the Trump tape video, yet you'd think those same people would have like a conniption over a guy groping small children. No <laughs> headlines, no month-long news cycle of outrage. It's like the outrage is just never consistent. It's like if your team does bad, be quiet. If other team does bad, yell. Yeah. yeah. This is why I hate the two-party system. I actually system. saw a few people say that um, he's just very affectionate. Oh, would you let him do that <laughs> to your kids? I wouldn't. You see the videos of the kids too? They're like... Yeah. Oh, yeah. There was the one guy slapped his hand away. Did you see that? Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Because like, yeah. that was his kid. He was like, yeah, nobody. it's like as if they know how he is, you know? I don't yeah. know. There's just like hour long compilations of him not knowing where he is, saying weird shit, <laughs> mumbling. <laughs> the guy had two brain surgeries. Seriously, he had a brain aneurysm. Not, really? Yeah, not even making a joke. He, and he talks about it, but they never talk about that. Like, I mean, like, they, do you realize. But do you notice that he seems a little bit more. Or, um, he seems a little bit more lucid now. Yeah, I noticed that. Like after he won, I'm like, he's doing a little bit less of the stuttering and the. Yeah, I mean, they. I'm like, they, oh, he can string a sentence together they, now. Up, all of a they sudden, they up his prescriptions, probably. I don't know. <laughs> and then he's 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 on this campaign about how important it is to wear a mask, and there's all these videos of him pulling it down and yelling in people's mm -hmm. face. Like, why why does nothing make sense anymore? We just seem to accept that whatever we get. It's just, um, it's just constant hypocrisy. Yeah. And I think there's a reason for that. It's because, so they want the rules to be as arbitrary as possible because the point isn't to follow a logical argument. It's to get people used to just arbitrarily following orders. That's why every day it just gets more and more insane. <laughs> it's just something's just so wrong about it. I don't know. You know, we have, we have a few things in common. Number one, we both make videos that challenge mainstream narratives, right? Number two, we might be the two most sarcastic people to ever live. <laughs> like our level of sarcasm is so thick that if we were to have children, the baby would come out and be like, oh, look, everyone's so happy. What about me? I didn't ask for this. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. I can't wait to get started. Seems perfect. <laughs> exactly. But, you know, going to the videos, the only difference is you focus more on politics and I focus more on like societal standards and behavior. What I noticed, the more you question the authenticity of a mainstream political narrative, the more people try to put you in a conspiracy theorist box and blacklist you. I'm I sure know. you get that a lot, right? Do you? Oh, yeah. You get pigeonholed. Well, so, I, like, for instance... I cannot say anything about Biden or anything on the left without people immediately assuming I'm QAnon. Here's the thing that conf it's just that it, it's this problem yeah. people have where they think if you believe yeah. if you don't believe in something, you must believe in the opposite. It's so interesting. And, and here's the things that that confuses me. I've never met a single person who didn't believe that politicians or the media lies. Like no matter what side you're on politically, every person I've ever talked to, including people who think conspiracy theories are dangerous, seems to be in agreement with the fact that politicians and the media lie that being said if everyone yeah. agrees with that then why do people vilify the people who attempt to expose their lies i don't know it's unreal it, i've actually found that people people will talk like that when we're in a peaceful time all politicians are liars they're all scum but then as soon as as soon as it's important to yeah. not trust the politicians that's when they're like forget it I, I don't want any responsibility for what's happening here. I'm going to give it to you. Just save me. But I don't no want to deal with problem. this. That is common. That's a very but common no one thing. has a problem with detectives or private investigators. Like uncovering murders <laughs> or robberies are fine, but uncovering mass deception. Now that's right. a big problem. Why is that? <laughs> I think people were raised from birth to blindly trust authority. 
And I don't think that was by accident. I think that's something they they created in society for a reason. So, for instance, when I was in elementary school, um, just the teacher uttering the words, I'm going to mm. call your mom, was like, gave kids just like, they would just start sweating. And I think people like us who don't, who do question authority a little bit, we weren't raised like that. Like, I wasn't raised where my mom was like, whatever the teacher says, whatever the man in the uniform says, just listen to anything they say. My mom would be like, teachers can be stupid, too. Everybody can be stupid. There's no reason you should blindly trust anyone. Yeah, my parents didn't listen to anybody. So if I did get in trouble in school, it was very much like, you tell me what happened, and I will take into account your side of the story. My mom had enough respect for me as a child to be like, well, what happened? But most parents don't. They're just like the second you do something wrong, you believe the adult. You don't That's trust true. the child. That's like, true. I, I noticed like for in my situation, like my parents always kind of like instilled in me the idea to believe in myself. And like, I, I don't know. Maybe maybe that's a difference. I guess it's like the difference in the way you're raised or the values. But do you think a lot of people live in fear in general and they want to be told what to do because they don't actually trust their ability to decipher what's going on? So they just like relieve all the logic to and they hand it off to powers that be yeah definitely and that's what i was saying earlier about about just kind of giving that authority to somebody else and also making these rules so confusing that people just end up like their brain melts and they're just like hey i don't know what's going on and that's how you get this just trust the experts yeah it doesn't matter what the hell they're saying just you don't have to figure it out for yourself it, so just trust what somebody else is saying and they'll take care of it's it. It's interesting you. because I watched one of your latest videos and you were bringing up a point about how the people that you trust, like doctors, at one point they were promoting cigarettes. Yeah. They were, I mean, I didn't even know about any of that. I mean, they were just like really? all over the magazines, the ads and promoting cig- I mean, like, I mean. Oh I, yeah. Somebody was telling me there's a very common phrase in the science community, which is, Never let your findings conflict with your funding. So essentially, they're just, they're, they pay for the data they want, right? That's how things happen, like the cigarette thing. Yeah, I'm just thinking, I'm jumping around a little bit, but like the biggest <laughs> critics of conspiracy theorists, they always say it's the spreading of false information that's <laughs> dangerous. But what I find interesting is that they're never upset with the mainstream media for doing that they're never upset with them how how many times have they been wrong millions and what happens when (laughs) they are wrong usually nothing but sometimes they write like a retraction but do you notice their retractions never a headline their retraction it's it's always like a little thing like it's never a full-on article about about it that's yeah. distributed in the same fashion as the original article like if they're so concerned about false information being spread then why don't they send a massive alert out to people in the <laughs> right. form of a front page headline explaining what the truth is so it's clear what is true and what is false and let that circulate right right i mean it's just and the weird thing i always find about that with the disinformation is dangerous is that not in one of my videos have i ever told people what to do my right. whole thing is 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 individual freedom. Right. So in my mind, if you're afraid of a virus, you have every right to stay home. If you're afraid of a virus, you have every right to put on, you know, put on a mask that works, first of all. Don't put on a cloth one. Put on the N95 mask to protect yourself. Right. You can put on a full, like, why instead of doing what we're doing now, wouldn't the government just take all that money that they dumped into everything and give everybody like a full hazmat suit? Right. Then the people right. who are afraid are perfectly protected. It doesn't matter what you do. They're still protected. It's not reliant on other people. I feel like they and could. And people could go to work if they want. People can stay home if they want. That's all I ever advocate for is right. freedom. Well, it, what's interesting about what you do is kind of similar to what I do. It's like you have like actual evidence that you present. Right. Like actual right. video. Ev- it's almost as if like video evidence is not even evidence anymore to some people. No, it's you notice that, though? It's like they will they will resist the evidence and try to <laughs> yeah. dismiss. It. It's like, what are you doing? It's like this is like, why? Because- why is that happening? Because I noticed that. And I know you go through this with people. You might have discussions with people and then you'll yeah. be like, no, look, like here's here's the opposite of what you said. But like, I, it's not me in saying order for it. people to kind of open their minds to a lot of this information. They have to completely dismantle their entire belief system, which is not an easy thing to do. Right. It's like challenging then, someone's religion. 
Actually, I have a thing about belief systems and why they work so well in controlling human behavior. Yeah. So for like 99% of humanity, we've been nomadic. Okay, so human beings would travel around in groups of about 100 to 150, and that's how they lived. The men would hunt, the women would pick berries and gossip or whatever they did, and that's how human beings lived. And then when the agricultural revolution happened, we kind of became like slaves to our crops. So we had to live around like our wheat fields, and then, you know, villages developed and population growth happened, right? So the way you get... Um, so people can only kind of handle a hundred to 150 people in a community beyond that starts to kind of break down. Even if you think about like your life, you can only kind of keep up with about a hundred people, including like relatives, friends, family, acquaintances, whatever. As soon as you go above that, things start to kind of crumble. So, um, now that we have populations, you know, huge populations, a really good way to um, control people and to, to kind of shape public opinion is through stories. And the reason they have to be stories and they have to be imaginary and belief systems is because tangible things you can poke holes into, right? So, you know, not to say anything bad about religion, I do believe in a higher power, but organized religion, for instance, mm -hmm. that you have something that's a belief system, so you can't really challenge a belief system. It's just something you believe. Right. That's why governments love controlling populations by using invisible enemies. Yeah, they do do so that. If you were to, if they were to say like, oh, there's a bunch of wild, rabid wolves that are coming to attack you, all you have to do is see that there's no wolves. If it's <laughs> something in the air, <laughs> if it's right. something coming to get you in the air, there's really no way to ever prove that's not happening. Right. Well, and you can kind of change the story every day. You can change it in little ways to mold people's opinions and mold their behavior. Yeah, that's pretty evil. <laughs> I mean, it's very <laughs> manipulative. It's like if you were in a relationship with somebody like that, Jesus, that would traumatize you for the rest of that's your exactly life. exactly what we're dealing and with. And then some, but yeah, you're right. And it's like, but then there's those people that stay in those abusive relationships. So they're basically the people that just submit to this, yeah. knowing in the back, they got to know in the back of their head that they're being manipulated. Oh, it's the exact same uh, tactics as an abusive relationship. It's, yeah, see, that's interesting. The gaslighting, right? Yeah. That's why I keep saying, I'm like, you know why I think more women are kind of catching on to what's happening here than men? Why? Because all women have been <laughs> Because way more women have been in abusive relationships and they're like, where have I seen this before? You might be on. I'm not allowed to see my friends, but it's for my own good. Right. <laughs> so a Alex Jones recently shouted you out. There's a talented young lady named What's Her Face online that's getting millions of views and she's engaging in thought crime. She's coming out and pointing out that when you virtue signal for mindless corporations that run death camps in communist China like Apple, that you're really a fraud. And it's women and other humans like her, they're going to turn the tide. Did, did he call you and say, listen to me? No. The globalists are coming. <laughs> the globalists are coming for okay. you. We want you to get on a plane, come down to Austin, Texas, and join InfoWars. <laughs> we'll give you a lifetime supply of InfoWars vitamin supplements and freeze-dried emergency <laughs> food. How does a freeze-dried meat bucket sound, huh? <laughs> he didn't, he didn't you give you that phone call? surprised by how many people... <laughs> <laughs> messaged me to be like, you got to stay away from Alex Jones. He's controlled opposition. I was going to ask you, did you get any ba controlled. backlash? I'm like, what? I'm like, who do you think I am? I'm a Canadian living in a town no one's heard of. You think I'm hanging out with Alex Jones right now? Right, right. I've had the people that are like, she's working for Soros. I'm working for Soros. Isn't it interesting how when you're out there and you put your ideas out there and and you feel the other side of the the uh speculation and the you know the conspiracy yeah. theory right like yeah. it's like people that's the one thing though uh because really th this is why i don't like the term conspiracy theory because first of Me all either. conspiracies are real people do conspire to lie <laughs> yeah. like that's just like common that's knowledge fact, right yeah. but it's like really though what you're you're just a citizen who's researching things on their own presenting yeah. the evidence they found and highlighting things that contradict what the masses are being told like how yeah. is that bad well one of the things too is you get a lot of those people who are like you shouldn't be 
you know, for instance, shouldn't be talking to this person or saying this because you're making our community look bad. And I'm like, a lot of the time, it's the conspiracy people who make us look bad because they'll be watching something and they'll be like, oh, that person's controlled up. Did you see all their hand signals? And I'm like, you need to stop with the hand. They're, you make us look crazy. Stop with the hand signals. I know a few people like that, and they're just so quick to just come to a <laughs> conclusion, right? Yeah. It's like you need to like look into this more. Like, please don't ever be a judge, a detective, or anything <laughs> where you're like you got to figure something out because you could just show up to a crime scene and be like, "Oh yeah, I already know what happened." It's yeah, like, yeah. "Oh wait, sir, we have evidence." I don't need that. You now, know what I mean? Made a peace like, sign, and I know what that means. Yeah, I already know what that means. I, you know the other thing I hate too is like the people that believe in like the shape-shifting eye thing like like have you seen those videos where yeah. it's like Justin Bieber's eyes twitched or whatever and it's like yeah, yeah. I, and you know what's funny because I've literally hung out with people that will like excited like show me it's like oh my god this is like absolute proof it's like I you know a lot of people don't know that I was a film editor before I started doing this stuff so it's okay. like in editing like I know that when you get a low quality feed of something uh, a lot of times like the eyes will get pixelated because there's so many colors in people's eyes right. so it can't process it so what happens by default the program will will just flatten it out to be one color so yeah. it's like I literally know the answer to it <laughs> actually I've had something similar with that too there are a lot of people who will post videos of themselves in front of the sun and right. they're like, do you see that? There's yeah. an orb floating around behind me. There's an orb. Yeah. And I'm like, that's lens flare. Right, right. That's all that is. Right. So it's You like- need to stop making us look insane, okay? Right. There's no orb. The, the second sun is not floating around. That's lens flare. That's why I hope people are watching this who like, are the people that like dismiss all cons or I hate that goddamn no, word, but it, like that's there's how no they, there's, no, there's good no good word. word. Right. No. Like, but it's like, they, like they should see this right now and see that like people like you or I, like we shouldn't be lumped into that. Like we're making fun of the same shit that they're making fun of. But it's like, yeah. it's funny how though, they'll still try to dismiss people that are trying to counter the narrative with evidence. Well, I think what shocks me the most is how angry people get. People yeah. will get like extremely enraged. They will. That somebody's a flat earther. And I'm right. like, I don't understand how this affects your life though. Yeah, I don't. I don't. What care. upsets you so much about somebody believing the Earth is flat? Who they get, cares? They get very angry about it. it yeah, it's they get where, so mad. Like, see me personally. Like, I don't. I don't. I wouldn't lean towards that. I believe that. But it's like, I don't even know how Wi-Fi works. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> see, that's the thing. Is like, I'm okay with not knowing. That's the thing. It's like some. Right. Like, I feel like everybody. And I'm also come okay with conclusion. people questioning. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, you're not human if you don't. There's question. also the people that like if you just ponder about things and you're wrong. They're like, you were wrong. <laughs> yeah. Never gonna listen to you yeah. again. You were wrong. I'm like, I never said that was a yeah. fact though. Yeah. I was just pondering. Why do you guys get so upset about? I'm gonna right. pose a question to you. You guys can tell right. me your thoughts and right. we can discuss. Well, what's- that's what's funny about like. It's really strange. It's like everybody's that's, just trying to catch right. everybody. Everybody's trying to I know. To just, it's ah. it's funny people yeah. that are in the public light that have their all of their ideas recorded basically. Like your your full body work like we like yeah. you and I like we talk a lot, right? So like think about people who are professional, mm-hmm. you know, you could you could even take like a guy like Alex Jones or whatever like that moment he says one thing that's wrong. That like discredits his whole his whole identity and everything. And it's like, guys, it's like if you were recorded yeah. your whole life, like th- there was a lot of shit that you said that was wrong. Oh, and I know. Still though, like, oh, I know. Why are you listening to somebody like that and like, like under the pretense of that, like whatever he says is the truth? It's like that, like that's just the guy that's presenting information. You know, so it's like just take the information that he's given you and then do your own research about it. He's not a god or messiah. This is what I always tell people. I'm like, don't listen to anybody. Don't right. trust anybody. Don't trust me. I'm not asking you to not trust them and trust me. I'm asking you to look at the information and use discernment and decide for yourself what you think is true right. and what isn't true. That's all most of us are ever asking, but they do do that on purpose. They try to, they, they lump really crazy things in with things that are very true. Yeah. What's like so- things that are just, I saw one the other day, it was like a pyramid. It was like a pyramid of crazy conspiracies. Yeah. So they lumped, they lumped things like hollow earth in with, uh, you know, 
celebrities using uh, force baby foreskin as moisturizer. And I'm like, but that's not even that's not even a conspiracy. They admit they do that. I don't get <laughs> right, why you're right. saying that's a conspiracy. <laughs> celebrities are straight up like, yeah, I use a moisturizer that uses baby foreskin. Or one of them was just Soros. It just said Soros. Yeah. I was like, what about him? <laughs> oh my god. What's something that uh, is out there right now that um, is like a hot topic or on your mind that you're just like dying p- for people to see, as far as like maybe something in the mainstream narrative right now that is just like everyone's kind of just like they're locked in that it's this way but like there's something that you might have uncovered in your research that is just like hard evidence that would be like if only I think people my could two see that big ones that yeah. i haven't fully gone into yet are the history of vaccines because that's mm. one of the ones that when i started doing my digging on the history of vaccines my mind was just blown yeah. Just with the yeah. amount of corruption okay. with vaccines. Another one is Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood's a big one for me. Planned Parenthood. Oh, man. So much shit. There's so much shit. There's so much shit. Oh, I have a personal uh, example of that. Like, okay, so I didn't know anything about Planned Parenthood as far as the history of it. But so do you remember, right. and you could probably, you could add to jump in at any time, but do you remember when people were upset that they wanted to defund Planned Parenthood. This this was like a few years ago or something, maybe two, three, four years ago. And I remember reading a bit about it. I came across an article that said Planned Parenthood was created to eliminate black people. And I'm like, okay, that's a big fucking (laughs) claim right there. And I had a friend who was so against the defunding of Planned Parenthood. And it was all over the news like that they're going to do that big outrage. And I sent this to Mm -hmm. her. And she said, and I said, is there any truth to this? And she said, what is this? This is conspiracy theory bullshit. So then I did some reading on Margaret Sanger. I think that's how you pronounce it, right? The founder of Planned Parenthood. And I I find all these historic documents of her advocating for eugenics. There's literally a letter she wrote to a doctor in 1932. And you could look look this up, warning him to be careful what he says because we do not want word to go out that we want to exterminate the negro population this is yeah. like a historic it was literally document. created as a eugenics and program. then meanwhile you see like. half the country is like no don't defund them and they're they're defending it's like guys do you even know like this is this information is out there and then i show yeah. that to my friend she doesn't respond for two days just disappears <laughs> and then goes then finally admits wow i never seen that before and and this is the type of oh well that's yeah good. but it took like like it they need like this she was probably having a meltdown it's not it's not great information the first time and another thing about planned parenthood yeah. is uh yeah. bill gates dad was on the board i believe for planned parenthood interesting planned parenthood I didn't know that. And the, he's like a whole family of eugenicists. He talks openly about depopulating the earth. I have heard blips about And it's that. like people will kind of skew that to be like, he means he's going to make people healthier so they have uh, less babies. I'm like, I don't even know what that means. I don't even know how that's. Like, let's just say like the worst case scenario, like that is actually his full on evil plan. Like to like, there is a chance that that could be true, right? I mean, there's evidence that points to that based on his history. Like obviously like yeah. rational common sense think, right? Like, but like to not entertain the possibility of that and just skip over that and just go to straight on defending that. Like how shitty would you feel mm-hmm. if it really, they really found out that you defended this evil fucking bastard you know what i mean who had that <laughs> i know they just why like are out. they so quick to just want like like again it goes back to it's like i don't know i'm like scared to fucking put my stamp of approval <laughs> down because it's like i don't want to support exactly. a murderer like i don't know but I i'm not saying he is i don't know yeah i don't know <laughs> that's my thing about voting yeah i think voting is very ritualistic like i've never voted and the reason i don't vote is because i'm like now, anything that guy does, yeah. I've become a share- shareholder in everything he does. Right. So it's very ritualistic. It's like you pick you pick the wrong guy, which you always do because they're all corrupt. Right. And now I've like everything he does. I'm part of that. 
Right. That's why I make sure that if when I vote, it's like I've got to truly believe in this person. And that's why, like me personally, I'm registered as an independent voter. So I'm like, my guy never wins. But it's like, yeah, it's <laughs> That's a good way to go about it. Just pick the guy that but you I, But I got to stay true to myself. If I'm resident, res, if, yeah. if his message is resonating with me, like I'm going to vote for him. Right. It's like, I f they'll, they'll go, oh, you vote independent. Oh, you're throwing your vote away. But I actually look at it like they're right. throwing their vote away because they're voting for the lesser of two evils. Now, imagine if they didn't do that and just voted for somebody that resonated with them, Right. That you would eliminate would just, the two-party system probably because everyone seems to admit that we never have good options anyway. But then they just keep. Well, it's like even with this round, people were like, I voted for Biden because it was the only option better than Trump. I'm like, didn't a, an actual black person run? I don't know. I'm pretty sure a black person. Yeah, you see, you wouldn't even know, I know because you only just I know. know. <laughs> I didn't even know who. <laughs> you just know that. It was more, I just feel like there was just so much comedy, <laughs> you know, to pay attention to that I just <laughs> totally didn't pay attention to anybody else, sadly. But, yeah, I mean, you never know who I else know. is running. I never know who else is running in the States. You just see the, the right. left-right false dichotomy right. thing, and it's like a shit show, and you just pay attention to that, and you have no idea who else is running. What else you got coming up? Um, I'm working on some new things. I don't want to say anything about it though, okay. just in case. Where can uh, I'm just doing my regular videos? Where could people find you? Instagram and mm -hmm. YouTube. And I know a lot of people are gonna say get on BitChute because I get forty nine thousand of those messages a day. Me too. I don't know where to go. I know I need to get off these damn social media. These, day. I mean, it's just like you can't even post a video. That Capitol Hill video that you oh, posted oh, got oh, removed. Oh, I made a, a Twitter post because uh, people are on my ass about this. Like, you're not covering the Capitol Hill incident. You're a Trump tard now. Like, and it's, it's like, <laughs> what? You like, talk, <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I, like, I already, I did. I made a joke about it. I was right on it. And I, I was preparing to do a video goofing on it. I posted a photo on Twitter of the Viking guy sitting behind the desk in the house chamber with the caption, America has made history oh, yeah, I today. Saw that. that with, got pulled from your Yeah. Too, right? Yeah. I just, I called him a furry. It was like I wasn't even like uh, supporting it. That is a huge yeah, Well, it said it was showcasing a dangerous, dangerous or violent organization. Do you know how many videos I made mocking Antifa? Never once yeah. got that message from any social no. media platform. But no. yeah, it's like we can't even talk about certain things anymore. So I don't know where to go. Rumble. You can't even go on Parlor. Parlor's gone or it's coming back. I had a feeling about Parlor. When people were like, get on Parlor, I'm like, they're just going to delete Parlor. What they're doing yeah. right now. Remember there was the Instagram blackout. They're going to black out everyone on Instagram. Right. I'm like, they're trying to get everyone off Instagram onto Parler, and then they're just going to wipe Parler. That's what they're probably going to do. Uh, it's just, And then it happened. It's just crazy, though, because it's like they're, they they stand by this thing that, that that platform incited violence. And it's like, do you know how much shit was started on Facebook? Kitty porn, uh, sex trafficking, Antifa meetups, ISIS yeah. recruitment, street fights, be beheadings. I mean, like, <laughs> like I mean, like, hello, like, they're Facebook you could say they're people. responsible for like <laughs> half the murders in the fucking world, like, like, or even the fact that people are like the algorithms are getting everyone onto conspiracy theories. That was also Facebook. Uh, I can't take even though it I think anymore. your argument makes no sense. That was still also Facebook. How are people just still like they don't see how do people not see it? Like there's it's just the information is just out there. It's just pure hypocrisy. I just can't stand it anymore. It's uh, just that moral authority, that holier than thou. Your wow. opinions aren't opinions. I know. They're dangerous. Well, we got to do this again because yeah, uh, for sure. I just, I can't go on anymore. I'm going to have it. <laughs> my brain's going to explode. It, <laughs> I just get very upset about this stuff. So I got to calm I down, you know? <laughs> so what's her face on YouTube? Go check her out. Yeah. She's hilarious. And uh, we'll talk again. Thanks for doing this. I really appreciate you coming on. All right. Thanks, man. All right. We're out. Peace.